Hello again, my friends and family members from the Broad Street United Methodist Church in Burlington, New Jersey, and anybody else who wants to join us on this uh, video and watch it, you're very welcome. I'm wearing my hat today because I'm really having a bad hair day, so bear with me. I read a funny meme this morning online, and I posted it myself. It went this way. Does anyone know how long toilet paper lasts if you freeze it? I mean, isn't it crazy how people are in a panic and are hoarding things like toilet paper? Well, this morning I participated in a Zoom conference call with the district superintendent and about a dozen other ministry colleagues, and we discussed how to develop online communities in times like these when face-to-face -face and in-person meetings just aren't possible. Now, there's no replacement for regular meetings, physical presence, touching, hearing people's voices, watching facial expressions and their body language, sharing in the sacramental life of the church, the bread and the cup, those things are indispensable. But even when such physical community isn't possible, we are still in community, if not in physical proximity, at least in heart and mind and spirit. And there's so many ways that we can communicate and nurture that community. God isn't limited. God's people are resilient. God's people are adaptable. And God will help us to continue to experience community, even under great limitations. And it's only for a while. I mean, I hope that we can all learn a lot through these adverse circumstances. I'm certainly on a steep learning curve about technology and how to communicate better with the whole congregation. And I have also come to more deeply appreciate the value of meeting and sharing common life together. I, I miss so much of that right now, being sort of holed up in my home right now. The Apostle Paul languished in a prison cell, limited to a room, four walls, some guards, perhaps a few other prisoners. Friends and supporters could visit occasionally. He was lonely, he was bored, he was uncomfortable, he was forced to wear shackles to be sure that he couldn't escape. He was under a death sentence the whole time, awaiting a possible execution. The doors could burst open any moment and guards pick him up and say, Paul, come with us, and that could be it. But during that time, he wrote these words to a young ministry uh, protege, Timothy. He wrote, Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. That is my gospel, for which I suffer hardship, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. In talking with my ministry colleagues today, it seemed that more people are participating in online services than usually attended regular Sunday morning services. In fact, some churches reported that their worshiping community has expanded to many states. People from all over the globe are tuning into our services and watching the messages that we're putting out. The truth is, I've never communicated with so many people at one time before in my life. Using emails and Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and Zoom and cell phones and video conferencing. I mean, communication has just grown exponentially. You're watching me right now, maybe from all over the world. I would like it if you would just let me know where you're from. On, our, on my Facebook page, just write in, you know, that you watched it and tell me where you're from. Now, we may be limited in some ways, but the Word of God is not limited. Paul was chained like a criminal, but the Word of God is not chained, he said. Paul took advantage of what he could do. What could he do? What was available to him? Well, he could write letters. And that became a body of correspondence that were distributed, read in homes, valued, copied, collected, printed, and 2,000 years later, we're still reading them today. He did not let adversity and being cut off from his public ministry hinder his zeal and his creativity to get the word out, and neither will we. During these times when we really can't meet together very comfortably and very easily, here are some things that you can do to keep community alive. One, 
You can pray. Pray for what? Pray for God's world. Pray for people in our country and the whole world that are being affected by this coronavirus. Pray especially for our healthcare workers who are ministering and healing people and putting their lives at greater risk to do so. Pray for our church family and your families and friends. You might have people who are sick, maybe with corona, but maybe with something else too. They need our prayers. You can pray. Here's something else you can do. You can reach out to one another by phone, by text, by email. Send somebody a text message. Ask how they're doing. Share stories of where you're finding joy and you're finding light in your own life each day. Stay in touch with each other. That's something you can do. Here's a third thing. Join us in online worship each Sunday morning. Each Sunday morning, we're going to try to live stream. Now, we're working some bugs out. We've had some technical difficulties. We're learning. And also, the airwaves are being jammed by so many people trying to use this, this form of uh, live streaming. But you can always get our services also on YouTube. How? By Googling YouTube and then going to Broad Street United Methodist Church in Burlington. You can get the messages that I'm giving and also the Sunday morning worships, and you can participate. Gather the family around the television or the iPod or whatever you're using as your, your, your device, and you can sing the songs with us. You can pray the prayers with us. You can say amen when I'm giving a sermon. Here's something else you can do. Check regularly on Facebook. If you have internet service, you have access to Facebook, and I'm posting messages every day. I'm posting a video message, and I'm posting a text message. I'm sending out emails, too, marked T-W-I-R-P, twerp, the week in review and preview. If you'd like to receive one of these, write me a little note, a text message, or write me a little note on Facebook that you'd like to receive it, and send me your email, and I will send you the twerp. I'll put you on the list, because there I am communicating, too. Number five. You can reflect on daily messages through daily devotional guides. This is number six, actually. Like the upper room and our daily bread. Take advantage of these kind of tools. Steffi and I, when we sit for breakfast every morning, we open the, the upper room and we, we read that. And we look at the scripture and we have a few moments of prayer for our family and for the church and for the world. Uh, we say these prayers, and the prayers are actually there in the little devotional guide. You can do that, and it will be spiritually nourishing for you. Get the children involved. Get the whole family involved. Take advantage of these tools through this COVID crisis. God is very much on the throne, and God will see us through. May the Lord bless and keep you. Amen.